Excuse me, Mr. Kossoff. He said, yes. I said, I've got a very interesting picture of you. I said, with the Beatles. Good gracious, he said. Well, he said, it was funny, but they came and asked me for my autograph because <laughs> I was the star in those days. I was in a, 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 a TV series called The Huggets. Oh, right, and yes. And I was the star and they wanted... So they signed my latest copy of uh, my script, a script. He said, and funny enough, recently that script was sold for a great deal of money in aid of my... My son, my son, his son died uh, very tragically of a, uh, a drug um, impediment. And he said, uh, do you think you could uh, get a picture of me, of him? And I said, well, I haven't got the negative. I said, but I'll copy it. And I copied it. And he lives at Hatfield. Oh, yes. And I pushed a couple of pictures through his door. A few days later, I got a copy of one of his books. Oh, was it? Uh, nice? with, signed with a very nice letter, which I thought was rather interesting. Jolly good. Now, who else? We've got a whole pile of photographs here. Peter Sellers? Oh, yes. Uh, oh. He, he lived at Chipperfield in those days. And uh, there he is uh, with uh, the scouts of the Scouts Gang Show at the Watford Palace. Um, here's, uh, here's another one of uh, this uh, wonderful boxer called uh, Freddie Mills. Oh, yes. Uh, he died in very unusual and tragic circumstances. Sir Winston Churchill because he was an old boy of Harrow, and there he is with his, um, uh, there he is with his, uh, with um, uh, some of the boys wh when he attended a function called Songs. All oh, right. Um, oh, and there's his detective standing behind Oh, yeah, him. Uh, Detective Sergeant Murray, I always remember yes. him. Yes. Here's uh, another picture. Oh, he's, he's still alive, of course, and he's a lovely guy. Um, uh, that's Cat Size uh, group, Cunningham. Group isn't Captain it? Cat Size Cunningham. Mm -hmm. uh, I was privileged to uh, go on an inaugural flight of the, tri the then Trident for the Kuwait Airlines, and I got a lovely picture of him um, in his cockpit uh, seat with the co-pilot above the clouds, above Norway. And when I got home that lunchtime, I said, "Guess where I've been?" And they wouldn't believe me. <laughs> I'd been to Norway and back. <laughs> Uh, here's a here's an interesting picture one of my favorites i risked my life for that um, this is a, a roaring lion well, name of simbad what was that all about well it actually it's not simbad it's simba simba oh, is right. hi a hindu uh, hin, uh, hindi for uh, lion right simba right anyway um there by hangs a tail there was um, a circus at harrow and I asked if it was possible to get in the cage to photograph <laughs> the, you know, the lion trainer at, at work. I said, right. any chance of getting a close-up of this lion? He said, oh, no, impossible. Anyway, eventually they relented, but I had to photograph the lion outside the cage. They took the camera away from me and put it in my hands in the cage. <laughs> they surrounded me with 14 men with big staves, and they said, look, if it lashes out, you've had it. <laughs> And I literally took it from three feet. You'll see how sharp that tongue is. It's just like a rubber nail brush. <laughs> and the fact is that I only got one negative, and that's it. And I've still got the negative somewhere, and I don't know where it is, it is exactly. Right. Golly, you do seem to have risked your life in, your, in the photography business. Lord Runcie, um, uh, he was uh, Bishop Runcie in those days. And uh, um, they were trying to raise money for to um, repair the fabric of the cathedral. And uh, I'd heard that the fire brigade had taken delivery of a thing called the Simon Snorkel. It was like a, a hydraulic uh, lift. So, um, but I didn't know at the time, but he suffers from vertigo. Oh. So anyway, I said, well, look, just come up on the platform and just see what, what, what you think of it, you know. And I tipped the driver off. I said, if he comes, if he steps up on this platform, up. The funny part about it is that I had to risk my life because I had to get off the blasted thing <laughs> to photograph him touching the the stone of the uh, the abbey roof. Uh, but I thought it was worth it. The fact is, he was frightened out of his tiny mind. But um, he looked scared. I must but admit. Never mind. Uh, we got the picture, didn't we? Which was, you know, sort of. The idea, of course, wasn't it? Quite. Uh, anyway, um, 
here's an interesting one. Um, I attended a, um, a film uh, in two parts, actually. It was called Hanover Street, and it was all a, a nice little story about an American pilot who meets this uh, uh, beautiful nurse who's married to a spy master uh, in the street called Hanover Street. And the film was shot at uh, Elstree Boreham Wood a, uh, Studios, you know, film studios. And the night I went, uh, I'd been to a dinner boxing show, and all I'd got was a thin Barathea um, evening dress on. And I was so cold, it just wasn't true. And I was there all night oh, um, uh, filming, because what happened was that the all it was, all the set was, was just paper mache and wood, that's all. And what they did, they sort of set light to the set, then put it out and changed the camera around somewhere else. And I always remember they had a London bus and they gradually tilted it over until it was right flat on its side. But I was waiting for a, 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 a certain picture which didn't occur until, what, six o'clock the next morning. And what it was, they blew the the uh, the side out of one of these buildings and they'd buried a couple of cameras under underground uh, to f photograph this sort of sequence and i got back to the office i had to develop i had to print i had to caption and i was just going out the out of the door of the office at uh, 10 o'clock the next morning when the editor came in he said where the hell are you going to I said, I'm going home. He said, what for? He said, you've only just got here. I said, I've been here all night. <laughs> That's the way you're treated in those days. I mean, these days, all this electronic technology, I mean, you do it in seconds. Uh, and th but it the wasn't same like thing, that in those Exactly. Days. Uh, he, um, for, um, photo um, photography these days, especially press photography, is, uh, is easy because everything's automatic everything is done for you you sort of uh, it's all battery so Could've. tell us about this one anyway I, I can recognize the guy in this picture very easily so well, tell us how you came well to this was the second part of this hanover street now the pilot uh, i had no idea who he was uh, nobody ever heard of him because it wasn't until the film after that he became well known Anyway, I had to go to Bovingdon, where there was um, two or three Mitchell bombers, and uh, they were being used in this uh, film, because this pilot had to take this uh, lovely nurse's husband, who was a spy master, over to Germany, and they were shot down, and was, they had to escape, etc. Anyway, there was a big, big, big stepladder uh, leading up to the cockpit of this, Hannah, this uh, Mitchell bomber, and I climbed up it, and I saw the guy sitting there. I said, excuse me, I said, uh, excuse me, mate, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> excuse me, mate, I'm sorry, but uh, would you mind uh, putting your head out the window? i just got to get a picture of you. OK, and he did so, and I got a superb picture, I thought. Anyway, uh, it turned out uh, that he was the star of the, the film. Who was? Harrison Ford. <laughs> <laughs> right. But the film after was Star Trek, where he made his, uh, his oh, name. Ah, right, say, yes. But oh, I thought it was an excellent picture. Yeah, I, mind. I think it's terrific myself. Well, Greg, thank you very much for a fascinating portrait of your life.